Chapter 12. Wayland. Part 1. Annika's Point of View. How bad is the damage, Grease? I began. Nothing I can't fix, but I'm afraid I'll have to stay behind. I will stay and make sure he's protected, Marin volunteers. Guess we gotta use Plan B, I reply. You got that Imperial officer uniform? Says Cal. Yes, as well as the giant crate, I reply. Remember, Annika, one step at a time, Cal implies. Stay safe, you two, says Grease. Thanks, Grease. All right, let's do this. Time skip. Boarding an Imperial ship was surprisingly easy. However, a new security check was going to be tricky. Once I got off the ship, I looked around at the base. Stormtroopers placed all of the crates to the side, besides mine. I kept watching from the corner of my eye as they placed it carefully on a hovering cart. Once I was able to take it, I followed the rest of the Imperial officers to the security line. Identification, an officer shouted. I slowly removed my ID badge, handing it to the officer. He snatched it out of my hand, proceeding over to the computers. What's in that crate of yours? He questioned. It's classified, I responded. Are you mocking me? No, sir. I'm simply following orders, I reply. I don't even know what's in this crate myself. My job is to deliver it to the Grand Inquisitor. The officer glared at me as he scanned my card. My heart was beating so loudly in my chest, I almost hope he didn't see my nervous state. May I go through? I began. The officer didn't say anything, but he handed my card back to me. Next, he shouted. Step one down, now on to step two. Scanners. As I pushed the crate through, I kept praying they wouldn't see Cal inside, but I'm about to find out. Halt. Scanners aren't working. I am on a tight schedule, sir, I responded. I'd like to get this package delivered. Not until the barcode is scanned. Trooper T1, proceed, the officer orders. The stormtrooper walks over quickly, scanning the barcode. All clear, sir, he responds. Proceed and get out of my sight, the officer snaps. I didn't say another word and pushed the crate towards the elevator. Once we were inside and the doors closed, I took the biggest breath of relief. I cracked the crate open just enough to talk to Cal. Nice work, Annika. You did great. I thought I was going to hurl, I replied. I'm glad that's over. Don't get comfortable yet. We still got to find that cloning chamber, he adds. That's a great idea. We got to find a computer system first, though, I reply to BD. Once the elevator stopped, I peeked out the doors to see if any troopers were nearby. I think it's safe for you to come out now, I whispered to Cal. Cal quickly hops out of the crate, pushing it aside. So, we split up now? I began. Looks like that's going to have to be the case. If we're seen together, this whole plan is going to backfire on us, Cal replies. Okay, I'll let you know where to go once I get in the system. With one final glance into each other's eyes, we shared one more tender kiss before parting. Watch yourself, Annika. You too, Cal. Be careful. Time skip. Finally finding an open desk, I sat down and began to type away. Now, where would it be listed? All I have to do is find a link. Easy, right? There's only a dozen computers right now, but one of them at least has to have information on the cloning chamber. Excuse me, but I believe this is not your post, said a woman. I knew that voice anywhere. Of course it had to be Kaya. I'll only be a moment. You see, my data pad broke, and I was trying to find some information through the system. I lied. I nearly flinched when she slammed an extra data pad next to me. Be prepared next time, officer. I don't want to have to report you, she replied sternly. Without saying another word, I grabbed the data pad. I could still feel Kaya hovering over me. If I turn around, I'll blow the mission and risk Cal getting caught. I let out a shaky sigh the moment I heard her walk away. That was way too close for comfort. As I slowly got up from my seat and looked over the data pad, I pulled my comm link out once I was alone in the hallway. Cal, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm here, he responded. I know where the cloning facility is. Time skip. Cal's point of view. Uh, Annika, there's a small problem. Is the door locked? She responded. It's guarded, and there's a large keypad codex next to it. Lucky for you, I have the code. But as for the guards? 
Hold on. BD, could you distract them? I began. BD-1 climbed off my back and went over to the two stormtroopers. Once I heard BD-1 signal, I quickly rushed out and used the force to knock out the guards. Wow, that actually worked. Nice job, BD. Cal? Hello? Are you still there? Present. Anyway, I made it to the door. What's the password? 1519, she responded. I quickly entered the code and watched as the doors opened. Before I went inside, I hit the stormtroopers aside so no one would sound a warning. I'm in. Are you on your way back? I reply. Yes, I'll see you soon. Try to stay out of trouble, Annika replies. I can't guarantee that, but I'll try my best. As I entered the cloning chamber, I looked around at the numerous amounts of Bacta tanks. Some were empty, while others had very distinct parts inside. I seriously doubt the Empire was just going to steal a blood sample from me after seeing this. I cautiously walked down the endless row of Bacta tanks. After speculating almost every single one, I noticed one stood out. However, it wasn't aligned with the other rows. This one was displayed by itself. I felt a chill run down my spine the closer I got to the Bacta tank. The man inside looked like he had been through a lot of experimenting. What was even more concerning was he only had one arm. He definitely seemed somewhat stable, though, considering there was an oxygen mask on his face. I heard footsteps approaching, which startled me at first until I realized it was Annika. Sorry I took so long. Did I miss anything? Just admiring this creepy clone, or whatever he is. Is this the Jedi you were talking about? I believe so. I responded. Uh, Cal, why is the tank flashing red? Did you hit something? I look at the back of the tank again, noticing the water has begun to drain as well. That would be me. Annika and I both turned around to the direction of the voice, but no one was behind us. I felt my heart sink once I realized it came from the back of the tank. End of chapter 12